and let's look into the most important part. What do we get when we send Salah and Salam to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What are the different blessings, the rewards, and virtues? First thing, when we send Salah, we get when we send Salah and Salam, we get ten Salawat in return. So we send one, we get ten. We get ten blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you know this blessing it's a very comprehensive word like it, it includes everything i mean it it can you can be blessed in many ways allah can give you that blessing in any way you can have problem with your health you can have problem with your wealth you can have stress in your life you have problems with your family anything that you can imagine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide which blessings are best for you and whenever you send that blessing on rasulullah sallallahu alaihi allah will return you with not one but Ten blessings with whatever is best for you. So that that is something that keep in mind. Allah can save you. I mean, you recite maybe one salah and salam here, but when you go outside, maybe you were destined to maybe like some accidents. No, no, Allah subhanahu wa taala because of that salawat, Allah subhanahu wa taala will take that away, that accident that is that is now coming as a blessing to you in return. And also the hadith mentions that ten sins are forgiven. Right, ten sins are forgiven. And we don't know really, uh, sometimes we commit sins and we don't even know how many sins we commit. Hundreds of sins every day. And you know, it's, people do so much of ghibah, talk about others, and sometimes they say something which, you know, brothers get displeased by that, whatever they are saying verbal, verbally. So uh, there are many kinds of sins. So we need to search ways in how we should get rid of our sins, and this is one of the very easy ways. And 10 degrees are raised. So this hadith is from Sahih Muslim basically. You mentioned these three, uh, three blessings or three rewards. Whoever supplicates Allah to exalt my mention, Allah will exalt his mention 10 times and remove 10 sins and raise him 10 degrees. 10 degrees, like in Jannah, you know that there are many levels. Every time you say it, your, your levels will be increasing. And we know as we go on raising the levels, we eventually will reach Jannah al Firdos. And even within Jannah al Firdos, we have so many levels. And then we have the highest of the highest levels, which are reserved for Prophet and the very, very special people, very pious people. And about that Jannah, which is like on the highest, it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, is, that particular part of Jannah is so special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planted the trees by his own hands in that jannah. So only very special people will get that jannah. Now imagine if you keep on going those 10 degrees little by little, little by little, you will, inshallah, you will reach that level. So keep that in mind. And also another hadith, wherein Rasulullah actually, he was one time making sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people asked him, why were you, why were you uh, doing the sajda? So he said, I prostrated, I, I made sajda out of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and he said that whoever sends greetings upon you, I will send greetings upon him. So it's not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Jibreel alayhi salam is also sending you. So, and you know that the angels... Dua, they get accepted. Right? Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you. He, you have committed a lot of sins and you're not asking for forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Jibreel salam will intercede on your behalf. He will make dua for you. So that is another uh, good thing that happens when you say this salam. And also, acceptance of dua. This is one major thing that people forget. You know, people uh, always mention, why is my dua not getting accepted? I make so much dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they forget the main thing. Like Umar radiallahu anhu, he said in uh, Tirmidhi, radhi, uh, Tir Tirmidhi, it's recorded in the Sunan. He said that when you make dua, your dua is, goes uh, above uh, the heavens, but it gets suspended. It doesn't reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is suspended between the heavens and the earth, and it is not taken up until you send Salah and Salam upon Rasulullah so You have to end your dua With sending Salah and Salam 
So uh, it can reach your dua without sending salah and salam, but you know, just as Allah alam, even in this world, we sometimes know that what happens if you send a letter someplace, and for example, if you don't enter a zip code, right? Your the chances of your letter getting lost is very high, right? So you're basically increasing. It's very mustahab that you, whenever you make dua, you end or you have uh, in your dua somewhere salah and salam upon Rasulullah so it is kind of a, a recommendation to, uh, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept one part and he will also accept your dua. So because we know for sure that salah and salam is an accepted dua. So make sure whenever you make dua, if you want to make it very short, just say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or better, say the whole thing, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And Allahumma barik ala Muhammad and until the end. So make dua and inshallah your dua will have very very high chances of getting accepted and sometimes your dua will not be accepted because it is not good for you that can also happen Allah SWT wants that dua to be fulfilled at this particular or that particular time because that one is better for you so we don't know but sometimes your dua is not getting accepted because you're not following the correct methodology or correct way of making dua to Allah SWT doesn't have to be all the times but if you just want to increase the chances then you make uh, salah and salam even in your duas and also on the day of judgment this hadith we mentioned this before as well Rasulullah said that whoever supplicates to Allah more often for me those people will be nearest to me on the day of resurrection on the day of judgment nearest and the scholar said that what it means is that when it comes to interceding, Allah, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will inter intercede for you, make shifa for you uh, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and make intercession for you because you used to send Allah, so you will be preferred over others. And it also means that when you send Lord of Salah and Salam on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will be close to him even like in terms of in Jannah. So this we mentioned last time also that when you send a lot of salah and salam upon Rasulullah it has an effect on you. Your actions begin to change. You, you, your life starts to change. You stay away from sins and you increase in your good deeds. That is one of the blessings of this dua in and of itself. So uh, when you increase your salawat, your actions will increase, your iman will increase and because of that you will become better and better. Right? And because of that getting better you will get closer to the levels that prophets are. Your Jannah will increase. So that way you are close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also, the scholars mention that when you send a lot of salawat, you get emotionally attached to that person. Like all the time, when you send, you get emotionally attached and your mind is actually filled with the Prophet sallallahu his thoughts. So that will affect you and that will increase your love to, uh, for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and th this is reality. This is the reality and that's the whole point. When you send a lot of salawat, your, your heart begins to change. Your heart begins to change because you are, you know, now you're taking Rasulullah as your role model. And more and more you say or think about him, that will have an impact and that love will come. And just like, you know... You have heard of that uh, thing that when, when a drop of water falls on the rock continuously, what happens after a while? Right? It, it makes, it makes, uh, it makes uh, a little hole in that rock, no matter how, how much strong it is. So little by little, little by little, things start to change in your life. Okay? So that's what happens. And you know, also we should always have, whenever we make meetings and gatherings, we should also start or have something, because it will... Send, it will make the gathering more virtuous whenever we send uh, salah and salam uh, to uh, upon Rasulullah sallallahu But my favorite is this hadith in from Tirmidhi, Sahih hadith, wherein this Sahabi Ubay ibn Kab he asked question to Rasulullah sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, I send a lot of blessings upon you. I send a lot of blessings upon you. But what portion of my prayer should I devote to sending salah and salam upon you? So Rasulullah Sallallahu said that as much as you like, send salah and salam upon you. As much as you like. So Bayibna Kaab said, I will, I will 
spend like quarter of my time. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? He said, as much as you like, but if you increased, it would be better for you. So then Ubay ibn Kaab radiallahu anhu said, then a half. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, said the same thing. As much as you like, but if you increased, it would be better for you. Then Ubay ibn Kaab, he said, two thirds. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the same thing. If you increased, it is better for you. And try to say as much as you like. So then Ubay ibn Kaab radiallahu anhu said, I will devote all of my prayers to sending blessings upon you. All my time. So then what did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi reply? He said that in that case, it will suffice for you from your worries and your sins will all be forgiven. So we are basically saying that all our worries, all our difficulties, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is taking care of them. So you don't have to worry about anything now because now all your problems, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will take care of. So it basically means that try to send lots and lots of salah. So, I mean, basically, you know, like whenever you're walking or riding and some people say, I'm killing my time, that's not how it should be. You should, whenever you're free, try to send salah and salam. So when you start practicing it, right, one day, two days, it becomes a natural habit. So whenever you are like just keeping quiet or resting, it automatically comes in your lips. You are just sending salah and salam all the time. Of course, you don't have to like send all the time, meaning, you know, sometimes you are working, sometimes you are doing something important or talking or in bathroom or whatever. But whenever you have free time, whenever you have time available, just do it continuously. Even while sitting here, even if you are, if you are able to focus, you know, once you practice, it becomes a, a daily habit. It happens naturally. So try that. And just imagine when you are just doing it, somebody is taking care of all your worries. You don't have to worry about it. So that's the biggest blessing actually. All of us are worried so much and uh, you know uh, in our lives we have so many uh, issues to take care of and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now your life is all cruise control. Of course we have to work for things but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping you very much here. And uh, subhanAllah it, 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 it helps me, I, I tried it myself from my own experience. I can say that in my, in my job sometimes it gets very difficult. Sometimes I really am really stuck in many things. But I notice that when I start sending salah and salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, something begins to happen. And things start to change. And I get help. I don't know from where that help comes. And it's not one time, two times. It happened to me many times. And try it out. Whenever you have this difficulty, it will really help you. It won't be like a, you know, like a big miracle coming to you instantly. But whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, there is something happening when you say that. So whenever you are stuck, do that.